All right, here we are with another video on the Ultimate DIY Home Security System. This time we're going to look at the communication link between the sensors and the gateway. Now this is extremely powerful because we are using ESP Now, which is a very lightweight protocol you can use between ESP8266 Wi-Fi modules, but it's not Wi-Fi. We don't need to go and connect to a Wi-Fi network from our sensors. It's point to point, meaning we wake the trig board up like that and the front door has opened. <laughs> there you have it. It will immediately power itself up. It doesn't have to connect to a Wi-Fi network wasting time. Instead, it wakes up. It knows where it's sending its message to. It's sending it to the gateway. So that's exactly what it does. It shoots that message over and goes right back to sleep. So it's much, much more efficient and faster. So we get that crazy long battery life. So instead of like five to 10 seconds of on time over here, we're only on for like a second and a half or two seconds tops over here. So you're gonna get that long battery life. But also what's nice is we're, since we're not relying on a Wi-Fi network, in case it gets jammed or the power's down or it's not available or whatever, we've got complete control over our own home security network, which is a really good thing for this sort of application. And just to quickly take a peek here at the block diagram, in this video we're gonna focus on the trig board to the trig board over at the gateway, which by the way, the gateway trig board does not have to be a trig board. It could be a Node MCU or, or anything else, maybe even an ESP32, but again, since I've got a whole bunch of trig boards here, that's what I use. Also, the ESP Now setup, everything I talk about in this video, can be used for anything that you need to connect two ESP8266s together. And I use this all the time. Anytime I just need a quick like wireless system, I use ESP now. It's just that easy and you'll see why in a second. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So just want to give a quick shout out here to the guy with the Swiss accent because this is how I found out about ESP now in this video. So I'm going to put a link to this down below. And uh, he goes into a lot of detail as to how this works. And that led me to this GitHub page with a few examples on how to set this up. So that was my starting point for this project. And uh, I, of course, had to add quite a bit to it. And I think I actually solved the encryption issue. But anyway, we'll get into that here in a second. All right, here's the code. We've got it in two uh, files here, the trig board side and the ESP now side. This is the gateway side over here. I don't know why I called it that. And uh, everything is hard coded here. You know, I thought about throwing up a captive portal, allowing you to modify and change things. But you know what? Once you set these things up, you never have to touch them again. So it was just a little bit easier to do it that way. And if I ever do revisit this project, or, you know, improve on it. Maybe I'll do that so it's a little bit easier, more commercialized. So uh, we've got the two code bases, and I just want to point one thing out real quick here and just show you. The code is up here, by the way. But keep in mind that these are the versions of everything I'm working with. So the Arduino IDE, the ESP8266 core, and when we get to the monitor, this is the version of the MQTT library. So we're not, um, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal if you have newer versions of it, but in case it doesn't build or doesn't act quite right, maybe try rolling things back to these versions. Okay, so because everything is hard-coded, we'll start on the trig board side here. The still on mode is if you are going to use the hack. So if you're gonna use this trig board hack to check if the input is still on, you're gonna wanna set that to true. So, you know, if, you're, if you want it to wake up once an hour and check if something is still on, like a lock or the garage door, then you would set that to true and you would get a message saying, hey, whatever it is, is still on. So keep that in mind. But for this right now, this basic example, I have that set to false. And then your trig board name, which would be front door. And then the message when triggered normally would be opened. If you have this set to true, you would get still on, which I believe I got down here somewhere. And we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, still on or still opened is what it would be, okay? 
Okay, then down here we have the MAC addresses. So like I said, you know, the ESP now is point to point. So you need a destination address. And on the gateway side, we need to know where things are coming from. So that's why we program the same trig MAC and gateway MAC into both of these guys here. And this took a little time here to figure out, but this MAC address needs to go in here a very certain way. And instead of just making up the MAC address, you should pull it off of the trig board. So if you go down here to setup right here, uncomment this out, and it will actually print out what the MAC address is of the ESP8266. And this comes straight from Espressif. Every single module will have a different MAC address, so make sure you use that. And I have this uncommented out on the um, gateway side right here, so I'll just give you a quick example of that. I'm going to clear the serial monitor and give that a quick reset over here. And then go all the way to the end, and there is our MAC address. And if I put this in just as is, like that, for the MAC address, it will not work. And I found out, and I'm not a networking expert, but I found out that you have to have certain bits in that MAC address set properly. So if you click on this link here, uh, it actually shows you how the MAC address is structured. And I found that it needs to be uh, unicast and locally administered. So make sure these two bits are set to zero and one. So let's actually do that and I'll show you what it does. Okay, so we are, our first byte here is CC. So I'll put CC in there like that. And like I said, we need that this first bit here to be zero, the second bit there to be one. So it's already set to zero and then we just set this to one. So CE should be the first byte, which is why you see in the code here, CE, CE, and up here, CE, CE. Okay, so that's the only thing you need to know about the MAC address. And you should do that for both the gateway MAC and the trig board MAC. Now, every single trig board in the system, all sensors should have the same MAC address. So all you do is take one of your trig boards, grab the MAC address from it, and use this because even though we have a, a unique MAC address in the trig board, we're going to actually set it to a different MAC address and we're gonna set it to this one here, okay? So it really doesn't matter and because it's our own network here, every single trig board can have a different MAC address and the likelihood of any two sensors being triggered at the same exact time is pretty rare. So. Uh, and I actually have a setup where when I open the side door, I open the garage almost at the same time. And I always hear them go one after another. So there's never a collision there. So trig boards all have the same MAC address. And you're only going to run this code on one gateway. So that really doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got the MAC addresses set up. And now we have an encryption key. So this took me a little while to figure out how to set up. And, and we'll get into this in a second here. But... I haven't really seen any examples work with encryption. So we've got this 16 unique uh, key. And what I do is go to random.org. See if that'll open up for me. Yeah, so I go to that link there. I click hexadecimal. I type in 16 and get bytes. And there is our random key that I would use there and just paste that right in the code and use that. So. You need to make sure that the key is obviously the same on both sides. And the reason I think I've got this working is because if you change the key on either side, it doesn't work. So again, though, I'm not promising that it is fully encrypted and secure because I'm not a security expert. Okay, then we get into the unique details of each board. So on the trig board side, this is all pretty much the same as the trig board code. In fact, I don't think I'm going to go through this because I've done this in several other videos. So we've got, uh, this is very unique to this trig board hardware. And if we scroll down, we've got this stuff here, which was added in again, taken from this example. Yeah, so this is needed to run the ESP now code. And scrolling down right here, we have this, which is used to set up the MAC address for the trig board. 
And if I scroll down, you'll kind of see the same thing over on the gateway side, except that it uses this to set up the gateway Mac. And I'm kind of putting in some garbage here for the soft AP, and I actually was trying to keep the AP not visible because we really don't need it uh, to be visible. Everything in our setup here is talking directly to one another. You're never going to have a device try to connect to this network. So everything should be not visible. And this is all just garbage in there. And then going down to set up on the trig board side. So I'll quickly blast through the trig board code because as soon as it, every time it triggers, it actually runs this code. So going right down it, it first has to figure out if it was an external wake. And if it was, we set that Boolean to true. Otherwise it's a timer wake. And then we grab the battery voltage, we turn the LED on, we do a little debug printout letting us know which what woke it up. We print out the battery voltage. If we have that still on, uh, Boolean set to true and the hack is enabled, then we would want to go and check to see if whatever it is, the sensor is still there. And then right here is where we have some decision making. So if we have an external wake or we have a low battery because we want it to tell us, hey, the battery is running low, or if we're still on right here, then we go and set off or, or, or fire off our message to the gateway. And this is the code right here that sends that out. Um, it's all right here. So all of this, this is kind of interesting the way this is done, but we initialize the ESP now. We set our role here to a controller because we're sending the data out from the trig board. And then we add a peer to it, which is our receiving end in the, the MAC address of it, which is the gateway with the key. So this is, you know, I think we're setting up the, um, the encryption here. And this, man, this took a long time to figure out. And then we set up the key for that, that peer. And then here is sort of the function that is called to send that data out. So even though it's like right here in the setup function, we're gonna call this back and, and just hold that for one second. So this is what's actually called. And then the payload we're going to send right down here. So I'm kind of skipping ahead here. So this is where we set up the message based on whatever occurred up here. Well, you know, because we wouldn't even be in this unless we were sending a message out. So right here is where we actually set it up. So if it is going to be a still on kind of message, then we, we set it up this way and the, the payload will be the trig board name, still the message opened with the battery voltage. And note that everything is separated here with the dollar sign so that when we catch it on the gateway, we can separate things out and format the message correctly when we send it out to the cloud. Okay, so that's the still on. Then right here would be a normal message right here, setting it up into payload, which would be the name, the message, which would be open, front door opened with the battery voltage. And if, if we have had a timer wake, but the battery is low, we want to just send out battery low with the trig board name after it. Now this is key, and I've talked about this before because one time I had a sensor battery running low and I had the, the trig board name in front of it. So from my phone, all I kept seeing was like front door, front door, front door until I opened it up and saw front door battery low. So now what I do is send the battery low and I can actually set it up, set it up to ignore those especially not don't send out a push notification and wake me up if just the batteries are running low and especially don't run the monitor kits. You know, we don't need that going crazy every time the every hour it wakes up to, and sees that the battery is low. So anyway, I'm, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but anyway, so right here now we do the, the deal here where we take the payload and set it up into, and this is straight out of that example here, where we set it up into this array here, the BS, we send it out right here. So ESP now send to the gateway Mac, that is the data with the length and shoot it out. And then I wait a second. Yeah, so once we send the data out, this function is not shown to us. What happens is, is that this is a callback 
after the data is sent. So as soon as we get this, this message here, you know, this, this function here, I should say, is going to get called as soon as it's done. So when it's done, give us a little bit of debug printout and tell us it's done. The send status will change. And I think I actually have that in another project, but we can check the send status to make sure it's good. But either way, we're good. We're just gonna die here at this point. And then we write that done pin high, power's killed and it's back to sleep. I think uh, what I might do in the future now that I'm looking at this is check the send status and then we can do some repeats. So if it doesn't get through on that one try, keep trying until it does get through. But I haven't had any issues of it not getting through. So once it's done, we're done. And after that, if it ever does happen to get into the loop, cycle through that done pin just to make sure that the power is killed. And that's all there is to the trig board. All right, on the gateway side, things are super easy. I already said that we set our MAC address to the gateway MAC. And in the setup here, I'm gonna go through and we've got the software serial setup. Now this is what we're using to talk over to the cellular module. So there are our pins, the URTX pins on 12, the RX is on 14. So that means URTX 12 will go to the RX pin on the boron and RX pin 14 on the trig board goes to the TX pin on the boron module and I'm just gonna go back. So there you have it, you've got 12 there uh, is our TX over to an RX, 14 is an RX going over to the TX. And there you have it, and that's all there is to it. So we're gonna keep that communication slow at 9600. And the same kind of thing as before, we initialize the ESP now. We're now going to be a slave because we're receiving data and we're gonna add up here which is the controller, those are the trig boards sending data to us with the trig Mac and the key and everything else. And then we're gonna, yes, yeah, set the key there. And then here is our callback that would be called anytime data is received by us. Whoa, and that's it. That's it, that's all there is to it. So like I said, very easy. So anytime new data is received from the ESP now protocol, this function is called. And what we do here is just print this out here just for us. So we've got uh, some debug and the data will be this. So when we send that data that, so right here, the payload, battery low or you know front door opened with the battery, it comes in right here as data. So what I'm doing here is just sending that over straight over to the cellular modem. I'm not even checking to make sure it's good, which I probably could do but I'm just sending it straight on over, software serial right over to the Boron module and then I'm done. So it's very fast, you know, there's not any bloat on the uh, gateway ESP8266. So it shoots it straight over to the cellular modem and then waits for the next message. So that's all I've got for now. The next video will be on the cellular modem.